Hey guys, it's Margot at Lanterna here, back with another Applications and Interpretations Maths video. Today we're going to look at discrete probability distributions and we'll be covering points 4.7 and 4.8 of the standard level syllabus. And this includes looking at discrete probability distributions in an introduction and then looking at a really important example of a discrete probability distribution which is the binomial distribution so i hope you enjoy this video and i hope you find it useful first of all then a little introduction to discrete probability distributions Let's start off with some definitions first of all a random variable x a random variable is a variable which takes a different value every time we measure it. So in the discrete case, remember discrete is counting things, whereas continuous on the other hand is things we can measure. So for discrete distributions, a random variable could be something like the number of cars in a parking lot or the number of fish in a pond. Discrete probability distributions then, this is a list of each possible value that the random variable can take and the probability that each outcome occurs. And we can represent this as a table or described as a formula. So for example, if we're talking about this case of cars in a parking lot, let's say the parking lot has capacity 200, then the values of the random variable could take would be all integer values from zero to 200. That's the number of cars that could be in that parking lot then the discrete probability distribution would also tell us the probability of that number of cars being in the parking lot. So let's look at an example. So we've got a formula here. The probability of a random variable being equal to some value x is equal to 1 over 18 times brackets 4 plus x close brackets for all values x belonging to 1, 2, 3. So this is a discrete probability distribution because it tells us, first of all, a list of the possible values our random variable can take. So in this case, it can take values one, two, and three. And associated with every value that our probability, uh, that our random variable can take, there is a probability of um, that outcome occurring or the probability that our random variable will take each of these values. So for example, if um, our random variable takes the value of one, then the probability of our random variable being equal to one is actually, well, four plus one over 18 to so five over 18, etc. Now we can represent that information as well in a table as we've shown here. So in the first row, we've got the possible values of our random variable here, one, two, three. And then in the second row, we've calculated the probability of each of those outcomes occurring. Now there's a couple of rules which we need to um, pay attention to. This has to always be true for all discrete probability distributions. They should be quite familiar. The probability of our random variable being equal to any of its possible values has to lie between zero and one. Probability of zero, which means it will never occur, and a probability of one means it will always occur. Also, the sum of all the probabilities, so over all the possible values of a random variable, has to be equal to one. Good. So, expected values then. The expected value of a random variable is the probability weighted by the value of the random variable. That might be a little bit confusing, but it's very similar to what we know about the mean. So when we looked at statistics, say for example, we took the height of all the students in our class. From that data, we could calculate what the mean was by adding all of the values that we found together and dividing it by the number of students in the class, which gave us the mean height. Well, when we're talking about probability distributions, there's a slight difference. With distributions, we don't actually have the data. And what we're actually trying to do is we're trying to deduce what could we expect based on these probabilities. And that is what the expected value tells us. It's what's the most likely outcome. And we have a formula for that, and that's given on the screen here in red. We're summing over all probabilities times by the value of that random variable. So let's look at an example then. 
Say for example, what is the expected value when we roll a six-sided die? Well, let's start off by listing the possible values of our random variable, possible outcomes. Well, when we roll a die, we can get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. And the probability of each of these occurring, well, because they're equally likely outcomes, the probability that our random variable is equal to any of these values is equal to one over six. So therefore, if we plug these values into our equation for the expected value, this is equal to the probability that our random variable equals one times by the value of our random variable. So in this case, one. The second term in our summation is then the probability that our random variable x takes the value two times by the value of a random variable two, plus the third term is gonna be the probability that x is equal to three times by three. And we do this for all the values up until the probability x is six times six. I'm not gonna write out those last three terms. Okay, well filling in then all these values, the probability of a random variable taking any of the values is the same right we said they're equally likely outcomes and the probability that we get any of these outcomes is one over six so let's take that out as a common factor to simplify our calculation here so what we get is one over six times by one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six and if we calculate this this is equal to 3.5, which makes sense, right? They're all equally likely outcomes. So therefore we're gonna expect that our expected value is gonna lie somewhere in the middle of all our possible outcomes. So exactly in the middle right here at 3.5. Okay, so moving on then to a really important example of a discrete probability distribution being the binomial distribution. There's a, important to know how to notate a binomial distribution and how do we show a random variable is binomially distributed. We say X, our random variable, is distributed using a binomial distribution with parameters N and P. And I'm going to come back in just a second what those parameters N and P are. Now we need to be able to characterize a binomial distribution or in other words, be able to recognize when a scenario or when a random variable is binomially distributed. And there's two really key points here. The first point is that we can recognize a binomial distribution when N trials are performed. And each of these trials, this is our second point, is that each trial has two possible outcomes. The first outcome we label as success, and that's going to occur with some probability P. The other outcome we label as a failure, and because there's only two outcomes, it will have probability 1 minus P. So there's parameters I was talking about before, N and P. N is the number of trials we're conducting, and P is the probability of a success. So for example, I toss a biased coin four times. The probability of obtaining a head is 0.7. What is the probability that I will get two heads when I toss that coin four times? Okay, well, before we delve into any formulas, let's just evaluate this problem. Okay, well, if we have a biased coin and we toss it four times, we want two heads. The possible outcomes that we can have, well, we could have heads, heads, and then toss two tails. We could also toss two tails first and then toss two heads, or we could have a heads, tails, tails, heads, or a tails, head, head, tails, or a tails, head, tails, head, or a head, tails, head, tails. So these are the possible outcomes. Well, let's just look at the probability of any one of these occurring. So let's look at the probability that we toss heads, heads, tails, tails. Well, the probability of getting a heads is 0.7. If we then want a heads and another heads, we multiply by 0.7. 
If we then want to dot a tails, well, the probability of tails is going to be 0 0.3. We multiply by 0 0.3 and multiply by 0 0.3 again. So overall, the probability of getting this outcome is 0 0.7 to the 2 times 0.3 to the 2. Now, we can convince ourselves that the probability of getting any of these outcomes is going to be exactly the same. But the total probability, we need to then sum over the number of ways that we can um, get two heads out of four tosses. So we want to have two heads and two tails, so this first outcome, or we can have two tails, then two heads, or we can have a heads, two tails, then heads, or a tails, two heads, then tails, etc., etc. And remembering that when we say we want the prob probability of something or something else, we add these two probabilities together. So therefore, the final probability that we get two heads i.e. x, which is our random variable, which we're saying is the number of heads is equal to six, because that's the number of outcomes we're summing over. And each of these outcomes has the same probability of 0 0.7 squared, 0 0.3 squared. So we've deduced the probability of having two heads out of four tosses. Now, using our logic, we could reason through that. Now, that's an easy formula which we can use to find the probability of having x successes out of n trials rather than having to go through a working like this. So the probability that we have x successes out of n is equal to n choose x times the probability of success um, to the power of the number of successes times 1 minus the probability of success to the power of the number of trials minus the number of successes, i.e. the number of failures. There's a couple of important properties to remember about the binomial distribution, and these are as follows, that the expected value of um, a random variable which is binomially distributed is n times p, and the variance of a random variable is n times p times 1 minus. So let's look at um, an exam paper then. So this is a paper two question. And it says, at a school, the probability that a student is left-handed is 0 0.08. A sample of 150 students is randomly selected from a school. Let k be the expected number of left-handed students in the sample. Find k. So the first thing that we need to recognize when we read this question is that this is an example of a binomial distribution or the number of left-handed students is binomially distributed. And how did we recognize that? Well, there's a couple key points to pick out. The first point to pick out is that we're performing a number of trials. We're performing N trials. We're sampling 150 students. And out of those n trials, we've got two possible outcomes. One outcome is that that student is left-handed, and we have a probability associated with that outcome. It's 0 0.08. And the other outcome is that um, the student is right-handed, which will occur with a probability of 0 0.92. So therefore, we've got n trials. Each trial has two outcomes. Hence, this random variable, the number of left-handed students, is binomially distributed. So that is the first thing to recognize before we jump any further into this question. So we're first of all asked to find k, and we're told in the question k is the expected number of left-handed students. Well, if we recognize that this is a binomial distribution, we know that there's a nice formula for the expected value of a binomial distribution. We saw that on the last slide. But first of all, before we use that equation, we need to show to our examinant that we've recognized that this is an example of a binomial distribution or that x, the number of left-handed students, is binomially distributed with 150 trials and a probability of success of 0.08. Once we've told this examiner that we've recognized this as a binomial distribution, we can then write our nice formula for the expected value of the random variable, which is n times p, which is 150 times by 0.08. If you work that out using your calculator, you should find that this is equal to 12. Good, part b then. 
find the probability that exactly k students are left-handed okay so we're now using that second formula we looked at the probability of having n successes uh, x successes out of n trials so in this case we want the probability that the number of successes or the number of left-handed students is equal to k well we just found that k is equal to 12. using that formula from the last slide filling in the numbers n and x we should find that this is going to be 150 choose 12 times the probability of success 0.08 to the power of the number of successes which is 12 times the probability of failure 0.92 to the power of 150 minus 12. working that out in your calculator you should get that this is equal to 0.119, remembering that whenever we have, um, that in all our exam papers, we have to round to three significant figures. Good, so we could have just worked that out using the formula. Another trick um, that's important to know is that we can also just work this out using our GDC. Everyone watching this will probably have a different GDC, so I'm just going to outline generally what you'd follow on most GDCs. So you'd go to menu, you would then go into some sub-menu statistics or probability. You should then follow binomial. And then it's likely that you'll get asked PDF or CDF. Well, when you're finding the probability of one given outcome, we use the PDF, the probability density function. So if you follow that, you should be asked to fill in the number of um, trials, N, fill in N, and the number of successes, X. And that should also get you the answer. Good, so that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. I'm going to be back with some more videos, but in the meantime, check out some of our other videos from other great tutors um, in economics or geography or ESS or chemistry. I hope to see you next time.